Hello, I'm Artem. I'll talk about haptics with input using LRAs and sensors. And this work was done at re Google Research with Alex Oval and Richard Lyon. The linear resonant actuators are used in almost every mobile device for haptics right now. Um, they largely replace the centric rotating motors because they are smaller, they provide crisper feedback as well. And um, for example, a lot of mobile phones are using LRAs, almost all of them. And you can see inside the Pixel mobile phone, the LRA is a rectangular piece under the next to the circuit board. And a lot of other devices such as smartwatches use LRAs to provide feedback. And LRAs come in many different forms and sizes and they can be easily purchased on the market. And they're very inexpensive as well. So in all of those cases, LRA are used as output. And in this paper, we show that LRAs can be used as a sensor as well, as you can see in applications on the right. So we can use it for touch, pressure, tap detection, as well as detect the surroundings of the LRA. And we hope this in improves the usability of our haptics in our devices and provides richer feedback. So the how the LRA is working, it's basically a linear electric motor, which is similar to a voice coil, a speaker. But the only difference is that the, the mass that vibrates is attached to a spring and this creates a resonant frequency, which is determined by the spring constant. As you can see on the graph on the right, um, the, the LRA has a very narrow frequency response. And this is to increase the vibration amplitude as well as to decrease the power consumption. So the other idea here is using back MF for sensing. Back MF is generated in every electric motor and it's a self-induced voltage from the changes of the magnetic field. Actually, the commercial array drivers use back MF to tune the resonance. In our case, we designed our own circuits because the commercial ones don't give you the raw output. The main part is the audio amplifier, which creates a driving signal from the LRA. Um, a set of analog switches, which can disconnect the audio amplifier so we can take undisturbed measurement of the back EMF. And we have a instrumentation amplifier to, um, to reduce the noise and to improve the signal quality because the back EMF signal is quite small. So this is how we do the active sensing. We, we actuate the LRA for a very short period of time using a um, custom PWM signal pulse width modulation. And you can see here, if we do it for a short time, then we turn it off and then we can see when we're not touching the LRA, there's big peaks um, in a light touch condition, there are smaller peaks and when uh, you touch the LRA very, applying a lot of pressure on the LRA, there is no peak. So, well, we figured that finger dampens the oscillations of the LRA and this can be picked up very well. We also do technical evaluation. So we looked how we can reduce the uh, active sensing acceleration. So we, ca we don't feel the LRA when we touch it. It's not noticeable. So we also look at how we can get the estimation of the force of touching. And we found this fits pretty well with quadratic fit. We also do power consumption, vibration noise, and we compare different LRA. Please look at the paper to see more detailed results. And we make some applications. So we put the LRAs on the bracelet so we can see how well the bracelet fits and if somebody needs to adjust it using the um, back MM, EMF sensing. We also attach side buttons on the phone which are sensitive to pressure, as you can see in the video. And we use the LRA which was actually inside the mobile phone already connecting it to our circuit. We can sense if the phone is on the table, if it's picked up in the hand or on the phone using our active sensing technique. And um, thank you for listening.